Okay, welcome to a tutorial to help you do your positive and negative space letter form studies. First of all, we need to make a new file. You can do it here with create new. You could also do it by coming up through the word file and pulling down to new. Both of those doorways lead you to this dialog box. You should name your file so positive, negative. Letter, and I'm going to explore a letter G. Uh, the width should be four inches. It may have some other measurement system, but be sure to select inches. The height should be four inches. Resolution 300 pixels per inch. The color mode is likely going to be something different, so please choose grayscale. 8 bit will keep that, and the background default is to white. It's not going to make sure it is white. And that will be our basic file to get started. Next, we need to have um, a letter form. So we'll click on our font tool that gives us a nice cursor. We'll click and drag to fill up the full space. And right now, this line is so tall. You can tell I've already been working in this program. And this is a very large letter form that's about to be made. When I look up here at the number of points, it's 400 points. It is more likely that when you get started, whoever used it before you will have done something that's more like 12 points, 15 points. You'll have a very small cursor there. That's what's likely to look like on your screen. I'm going to type in a capital letter G. I'm going to click and drag over that to highlight it. And now, if it isn't already big, you can make it bigger. I'm choosing at this time to type in 400 points. That letter size will fill up this uh, 4 by 4 inch square nicely. We're going, to, we're going to scale it and rotate it even more, but this is a good place to start. Now, this particular letter form uh, is whatever font the person before you do is using, the program is using, so you might want something different, and here's how you can do it. Come up here to the font name, and on the right hand side, there's an arrow, and you can pull down. And as you hover over these different font names, you will find, uh, you know, variations that you can try. Right. So I do want to work with this Arial Black that I have. And now we have a nice big chunky black letter G, but you can see how readable it is. Immediately we know it's a G. We need to scale it and rotate it to make uh, interesting positive and negative space. And the letter form should be more like a puzzle or a mystery. Still should be legible, but it shouldn't be so easy to identify. Okay, so first thing we'll do is scale. To scale, we want to use this move tool. And when I click on the move tool, you'll see there is handles in the corners of this selection. It is possible that when you click on the move tool, so go backwards, when you click on the move tool, you won't see the handles. In order to get the handles that are very useful, just come right up here to this property, show, transform controls, and be sure it's clicked. That enables us to go in here and click on the corner and now we have the whole bounding box for this letter G. Right now I'm going to hit Command and a minus sign so that you can see the whole bounding box that's helping to define this G. Up here in this corner, I want to scale this letter G and make it bigger. So I'm going to hover on the corner and I'm getting this cursor that has opposing arrows on a straight line. And I can click and hold it and drag it. But I want you to notice something very important. Do you see that when I'm moving around, I am stretching or squishing the letter G? And we do not want to do that. We want to be sure that our letter form stays the shape that the typographer designed it. So I'm going to hold down Shift. This is called constraining. So now I can make it bigger or smaller, but it will never squish or stretch the graphic forms within the letter. So that's a really important thing. That's called constraining. When you scale, in order to, to constrain, hold down the shift key. Now, 
the next thing we want to do is to rotate it. So you'll notice that when I hover right outside this exterior corner, the cursor changes to a double-sided arrow, but it's on a curve, and that will help us rotate better forms. Right, so we've scaled, and now we're rotating, and we can move this around. To move it, I just simply came and clicked in the middle, and I can move the letter form. And remember, I just I don't want to know it's a letter G anymore, but I just want to see interesting positive and negative space. So I'm going to continue to scale. In order to constrain it, I'm holding down Shift. And I can make it bigger, but I'm not losing the proper proportions for this letter. And I could come up with a shape like that. I'm asking myself, is it still legible as a G? Maybe. I am going to pull over like this. So now this is an aesthetic decision happening here. That curve. I think I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to hit return to accept those transformations. You'll notice over on the layers panel, I have my background, which is white, and I have my letter G, which is a black letter on the white ground. So if I want to save this as one of my studies, I am going to flatten this. And I can come here and hit flatten image. And now those layers are compressed just into the background. And now I want to hit Shift Command S. That allows me to save as. I just want to show you another way to get to the same place. File, save as, leads us to the same dialog. And here you see I have JPEG as the format. And now I need to write the font name. I'm going to substitute the font name, which was Ariel Black. So that embedded in this file name, I have the font name. So I have positive, negative, Ariel Black, G. And you can see I've been working here. I've got other letters that I've done before. So I'll save that and I'm going to accept these defaults. So I have a black letter G on a white ground. But what if I want a white letter G on a black ground? There's obviously numbers of ways we can do this, but here's an easy way. I can go up to the layer. Pull down to New Adjustment Layer, come over here to Invert. I'm going to accept these defaults. And now I have a white G on a black ground. You can see that it needed this layer, um, Adjustment Layer, whenever that happens. So in order to save it as a JPEG, I'm just going to come up here again and flatten it. And I'm going to hit Shift Command S, which is the keystrokes to get to save as. And this time when I name it, I'm going to add the word invert. Right, so I have two versions of this design. I have the white on the black ground and the black on the white ground. All right, so that's all you need to do to make all your different um, variations. And in the next brief tutorial, I'll show you how to combine the variations the best of your variations onto one file for printing.